Congresswoman Rashida Tlaib. to die, that they are not disposable. They have a right to live. They didn't ask to be born in occupation. And so I just want to thank you on the bottom of my heart. The dehumanization has chipped at my soul and I can't imagine what it's made so many other people feel. So you all being here to speak truth because the war mongers are out, y'all. They are ready. They want to kill and not stop. It's pure insanity. I still remember the cry of Maya, who's being dragged out of that festival, crying for her father. But just like poor Shaman Gaza, who is number one in her scores. I don't know if you know anything about Palestinian culture, but it's a big deal that somebody from Gaza could score number one on her. You know, it's like the valedictorian for the whole Palestinian people. And both of them, both of them are victims. They're victims of the oppression, of the violence. They both deserve to live. I don't care what their faith is or their ethnicity. Maya didn't deserve to be targeted. Neither did Shema deserve to die. And that's the common humanity that we all have to remember because they're trying to take it away from us. And we have to make sure it doesn't happen. Not on our watch. I'm going to be real with you all. My colleagues, many of them, I usually don't talk smack about them. No, I'm usually considerate because I don't like them policing me. So I don't police them. But as an American, not just as a member of the United States Congress, I am ashamed. I am ashamed that they're saying, not yet, maybe next week. <laughs> not yet, Rashida. Maybe, maybe in a couple of days. How many more have to die? All of us, you know, as we come together, and it doesn't matter our faith, and of course, the American Jewish community in my district, and all of you here, I just know how much courage it's taken to speak up. But all of you, as well, that you know you're being targeted, you're being gaslit, some people are losing their jobs, folks are getting events canceled, Literally, their First Amendment right wiped away for standing up and saying that children deserve to live. It is pure, literally inhumane for my colleagues to allow that to continue and sp say nothing. You know, they continue to want me to believe everything that comes from our own country and from Israel under Netanyahu's extreme government. But how many times have we been lied to for mass weapons in Iraq? Lie. Oops, we didn't kill that American. Somebody else did. Lie. We know the truth because at the end people are dying. Why can't we just agree on that? People are dying. So what is it justified if one does it or the other does it? It doesn't matter. They're dying. They're dead. No matter all of them now talking about humanitarian aid, great. But it's not going to bring the lives back. You're going to give millions of dollars back to, to Gaza to help children for great. But then you're going to give billions to literally fuel the same violence, the psycho violence that's going to continue to happen. Do you know in the last 15 years, the last 15 years there have been seven 
names. So when are we going to say as Americans enough? Because I truly believe this. I truly believe this in my heart. Americans want a ceasefire. They want it to stop. You know, when, when I first got elected, My cousin in Ramallah called me and we had this moment and she's like my little cousin but now she's an adult and she says to me oh my god I, I just we can't believe you you got a light and I said yeah you know I'm just like what are you know I'm here okay but she says you don't get it Rashida we really thought Americans hated us like the fact that you got elected like she's she just even that like oh my god so they don't I said no the majority of Americans are literally against oppression. They are, they're against occupation, they're against uh, human rights violations. If you just tell them the truth, they will be on our side. So we have to speak the truth. We gotta continue, stop allowing people to police our words, to target what we say. At the end, Maya and Shama should be alive. And if we don't get back to our shared humanity, I don't think we're ever, ever going to be able to come back from this. And to my president, to our president, yes, he still are. Well, hold on. I know, I, hey, I want him to know, as a Palestinian American, as also somebody of Muslim faith, I'm not going to forget this. And I think a lot of people are not going to forget this. And it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not a threat. It isn't. They, they think we're joking. I mean, I think the White House and everyone thinks that we're just going to sit back and let this just continue to happen. No. The fact of the matter is, our lives are not safe with you or the Forever Peach President. When are we going to feel safe? When are we going to stop funding continued, uh, literally, oppression of indigenous communities? When are we going to say enough? It makes me so angry to have to say it, but I'm telling you, I'm talking to people that literally are like me. They literally, literally believed in this party that was supposed to be inclusive of all of our opinions and our, and our views and our political stance and, and all of these things. But what is got, starting to get really, really, really clear and very loud is that somehow, Many of us in this room, because of our political opinions, because maybe our faith is a certain faith, maybe because our ethnicity is a certain ethnicity, that somehow we're subhuman. That somehow we're not as equal, to, again, of a human to be able to live and really survive and be able to thrive in our country and in the world. It's like it doesn't even matter. And that's what's been really painful. It's just, just continue to watch people think it's okay to bomb a hospital with children. You know what's so hard sometimes is watching those videos and, and the people telling the kids don't cry and like let them cry. And they're shaking and some of you know this, they keep telling them not to cry in Arabic. They, do, they can cry, I can cry, we all can cry. If we're not crying, Something is wrong. And so I'm telling you right now, President Biden, not all America's with you on this one. And you need to wake up and understand that. We are literally, literally watching people commit genocide and killing the vast majority just like this. And we still stand by and say nothing. We will remember this, but all of you, you need to know I swear to God, Allah, you are on the right side of history. You are. You're doing everything possible to save lives. What is wrong with that? Stop it with trying to try to politicize this. One, one girl, save lives. That's it. Do everything you're supposed to do to make that happen. Stop with the bullshit. I love you all so much.
I can't stand up here before you very long. But I wanted to run, even though my wheelchair is over there. But I said, forget the wheelchair. Let me, let me get up here with my sister. Uh-uh, because -uh, you're giving me strength right now. We love you. But because I love you more, as I stand up here, not only in pain in my body, but in pain in my heart, in pain in my soul, but also my brain cannot comprehend what is happening right now. The fact that we have to continue to come together to ask for peace and justice and self-determination and love and humanity for actual human beings right now in 2023, I can't understand. But I'll say this, we shouldn't have to be here. I shouldn't have to care every moment about what's happening not only to my sister and her family but to your families to you right here in the united states to our palestinian sisters and brothers and neighbors here and in gaza we shouldn't have to worry about your safety we shouldn't have to worry about the harm that continues on and on, but I'll say I'll thank you for being here, for putting yourselves on the line. I know that it's not easy to do this. I know what it's like to be the one under the oppression, but also the one that has to stand up to speak about it. And so as you grieve the profound loss of life and the violence that has occurred, and as you each deal with the unimaginable trauma that comes with this horrific moment, a moment where you shouldn't even have to be out here and is breaking my soul because there should be more people who don't look like you out here. Because you shouldn't have to fight this by yourself, but we thank our Jewish community for being out here saying, never again, not another. <laughs> Standing on the principle of peace, our country, our world, we know, we know war. We know the death and destruction that war brings. We know how the impact of war goes beyond the war zone and it goes beyond the time zone. We know that choosing the path of war almost always ends up in regret, but we also know it's only regret for some and for so long. We know war but seldom do we know true peace. And when we talk about peace, we talk about peace in increments. Oh, peace for this. Yes, everybody stand up for peace over here. We stand up for peace over there. But oh, no, 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 not peace over here because of this thing. No, not peace over there because they look like or they said or they don't have or they did this thing. But that changes today. We call peace. Today we demand to take the tougher course of humanity and peace over that easier path of hatred and violence that we so easily know. Today we demand consistency in our love and our respect for humanity, for all people, and all means all. If you look up all, it just means all. And we're saying all the people. All people. Today we demand that the world and our government 
Don't turn a blind eye to the collective punishment against Palestinians that we are witnessing even as we strongly condemn Hamas for the appalling. And, and, and I, I, I can't, I cannot okay any loss of any life simply because the Lord looked down and saved mine. So I will say this, even as we condemn the hurt that has already happened against our Israeli brothers and sisters, we demand an end to all violence and we demand humanity for every single person and we demand that they speak Palestine, that they speak Palestinians deserve self-determination. Palestinians! Deserve freedom! So we demand ceasefire now! Ceasefire now! Ceasefire now! Monday. Yes, this Monday, I, along with my sister, Congresswoman Tlaib and Congresswoman Summer Lee and Ayanna Presley and Andre Carson and <laughs> Nidia Velasquez, Velasquez and who else? Yes, who else? Ilhan Omar. And Ilhan Omar, you know, John Bowman. and Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. We introduced a ceasefire resolution that calls on the Biden administration to demand an immediate de-escalation and ceasefire in Israel occupied Palestine. to send humanitarian aid and assistance to the 2.2 million people under siege who are trapped in Gaza and to save as many lives as possible. And the sad part is when we say 2.2 million, we know that that number continues to subtract. Less than a week ago, only a handful of members of Congress dared to utter the word ceasefire. We were called by our administration repugnant. They called us disgraceful for pushing peace. But if you know the pain of oppression, if you know what it's like to not understand how you can walk outside of your home and be a threat just because you exist. And even when you're in your home, you are a threat because you exist, but because they don't understand that type of oppression. Right, that's it. And as much as this hurts me, I don't understand your oppression because I don't know what it's like to have bombs trapped on my family members' communities. I don't know what it's like to try to sleep through that and try to get away from that. And I hurt the way that I hurt. So I can't imagine what you go through. But they called us repugnant. And they called us disgraceful. But I tell you what, there is nothing repugnant and nothing disgraceful about saving lives. War! War is repugnant and war is disgraceful. And so we are right. And so on Monday, 11 more members joined us in the introduction of the Ceasefire Now resolution. Even today, we've had more to come out, such as Bar Representative Barbara Lee. So the momentum is building. Our push for peace is working. You being on the street over the last 11 days is working. Don't stop the phone calls. Don't stop the emails. Don't stop the push. Violence
violence we know will never bring peace. Violence only leads to more violence. And so together, you all, we must be bold. We must stand. We must stand on the side of humanity. We must stand on the side of justice. We must stand on the side of equality. We must stand on the side of self-determination. We must stand on the side of love. We must stand on the side of safety. And we must stand on the side of peace. And we must be willing to speak out against war and violence and against our government's complicity in it. In this moment, and I said it, our government's complicity. So in this moment, we ask ourselves and we ask those around us, are you for war or against war? Are you for saving lives or are you against saving lives? The time to decide is now. Cease fire now. Cease fire.